Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs we're previewing a prototype of Apistocracy, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome to London. The year is 1851, and young new members of society are trying to make their mark by visiting the parlor, the ballroom, the gallery, the tea room, and navigating the beehive, which is actually patterned after a famous illustration of the time that kind of broke down all the different levels of high society or proper society and uh, tried to make an argument for just how great it was. Um, to uh, adhere to that sort of hierarchy, almost like a colony of bees. And I'm going to show you how this game works in a two-player gameplay. I am playing a young upstart, Lord Shay. Here's my calling cards. And I'm going up against Jen, who is playing as Lady Tuesday. Now, each of us has a sponsor. Uh, mine is the Baron of Esk, and Lady Tuesday's is the, uh, Baron, uh, the Baron of Albany. Uh, which means we have a couple of personal objectives we're trying to do to make our sponsors proud, uh, which will give us more influence. We also each start with a deck of cards. Um, one of each suit, uh, you know, the uh, spade, the club, the heart, and the diamond. I got a deck of fives. Uh, my opponent, Jen, has a deck of threes, which is why, because she has a lower value card set, she is the first player. Um, and so she will be working her way up the hive first. So how does it work? Well, this is a worker placement game. Over the course of a, a week, and the game is going to last for four weeks, we each have four of our calling cards that we can um, use to get into various spots, like the parlor or the tea room or the beehive or potentially the uh, prime minister's dining room if we can uh, swing that. That's a pretty big deal. And so on your turn, you're going to take one of your calling cards and you're going to go do an action. But most of the actions you're going to do require you to exert some influence. And usually that's where these cards come in because each of the different suits has a different influential value. And that is um, reminded of right here on what might be the coolest player aid in all of board game history. It is literally a functioning fan in case you get warm while you're playing, but it also breaks down all the elements of the game. First of all, a reminder that in terms of priority, the heart suit is the highest and the clubs are the lowest. But then it also breaks down, hey, how we're playing through four weeks and how we're going to be exerting influence and how we interact with the beehive and the parlor and the ballroom and the gallery and the tea room. And what happens at the end of a round, at the end of a week. Uh, and then on the other side of this, it also breaks down the rules of how to play whist. Because there are actually two games in this box, folks. First, like I said, we're going to play through four weeks trying to navigate the uh, social hustle and bustle, you know, uh, make allies, uh, you know, increase our standing. But then at the end of the game, it's almost kind of like a video game final boss fight, we're going to go into an epic game of whist, which is trick-taking. And the cards that we started with, and potentially the cards we upgraded to over the course of the game that are better than our starting cards, will help us score a lot of points in that final game of whist. So... Let's get going. Uh, Jen, like I said, is the first player because her starter cards have a lower value than mine. And what is she going to do? Well, Lady Tuesday, because of her sponsor, really, really wants to work her way up the beehive, ideally making it all the way to the top, to Buckingham Palace. And if she's the first to do it, she gets three bonus points. But by just having made it all the way to the top, she'll get 10 points for getting to the top rung, level six of society. So her first move might rightfully want to be going to the beehive. And doing this action, you can see there are four opportunities to do it. And this is a worker placement game, so now there's only three opportunities to do it. Let you move up one step or laterally on your current level, one to four steps. Now, at the beginning of the game, we start here on the bottom row, which is nowhere. So Jen is going to move up one step and she can go this way 
or I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, she's the pink player, or this way to the uh, Royal Opera, or um, the uh, balloon launch at Box Hall Gardens. And what she's doing is she's giving herself access to these next steps, or these next steps. You can see the little arrows she can follow as she works her way higher and higher. And because of the way these things randomly came out, I think she wants to go this way. Both, if she goes this way, moving to the next level, Hyde Park or you know the booksellers uh, at Patterson Row, that's just going to give her access to a bonus parlor action. Which is nice, but she can always go to the parlor. I mean, there's two worker placement slots for that. You can see here's the symbol for the parlor. So coming up here gets her a bonus parlor action. That's fine. But coming over here, it's a bit more expensive. It gives her access to the tea room, or most importantly, it gets her access to Queen Victoria herself, the all-powerful crown. Now, strictly speaking, going either way would be able to get her up to that center one. But I think right now she values going, getting a bonus trip to the tea room, if that's the way she goes, more than and she values coming up this way to get a bonus parlor visit, right? So that was her first turn. Now, taking that first step uh, into society, uh, you know, heading over to Vauxhall Garden does not require any influence. But the next time Jen moves up here, here, or here, following, if she does another one of these actions, it's going to require at least a club's worth of influence, which means if she does the action, she'll also have to spend one of her cards. Now, she'll probably just spend her club card. But the thing is, remember, this reminded us of the priorities. Jen, if she's doing a lowly club action, she can play any icon to do it. So any of these, her diamond, her heart, or her spade would let her do that action. And the interesting thing about her club is, because this is a special card for her, she has a double club. If you look at my starting deck, my club is a little bit different. It's a single club, but it can be sacrificed to get a better card. Whereas Jen's club is actually a double club, which which uh, will help her out in certain circumstances. So anyway, she's got her starting hand of cards, but she doesn't need to spend any of them. She does not need to exert influence for this first step up the beehive. So that was Jen's turn. It is now my turn. Lord Shea steps up to the plate. I could also start climbing my way up. I you know, send my calling card over there, but there are plenty of other actions too. And coming over here to the parlor, and to do it requires either a club or a spade. If you get her first, you want to use the cheaper one. But if you show up later, you got to spend a little bit more influence. This lets us upgrade our decks, um, which is important because, as I said, at the end of four weeks, we're going to play a game of Whist. And going into a game of Whist with just a bunch of low-level cards is not great. You want to upgrade to these Jack cards and these Prince cards and maybe even the Queen cards or a 10. A 10 is going to beat a 5. So we could start building our deck to be stronger and you know weeding out crap cards if we come over here to the parlor. If we come over here to the ballroom, there are four spots. We come to this spot, this spot, this spot, or this spot. They all require, again, a club for influence to be able to do those things. And that would either let us get in good with the Lord of Commons, you know, the uh, the Parliament, you know, kind of work our political muscle, or with the Ton, which is short for the Bon Ton, um, which is basically, you know, slang of the era for the rich and elite, the, 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 the best stylish people, the Ton, the Bon Ton. So if you come over here, you can get one of these people who will give you bonuses, or you can get one of these politicians who will give you bonuses. Instead, you can come over here to the gallery. And again, if you come here early, you only have to spend a club. But if, if somebody beats you to it, you're going to have to spend a diamond to come here later. Well, you can start uh, commissioning works of art. Silhouettes, and then miniatures, and finally portraits. And they are worth progressively more points. And then finally, the other place we go is the tea room. And I think that's where I'm going to go. And I could either come here on the cheap for a club, or I'd have to pay a bit more to come here with a diamond. I'm going to come here. And now, I have to spend a club. So, I've got these cards. I'll go on ahead and spend my club. It just goes from my hand into my discard pile. And, um, you know, like any deck builder, once my deck is empty and I need to draw, and it is right now, I started with a deck of four cards. They're all in my hand. This is going to come right back into my hand in the next round. But, because I spent that club, I'm going to the tea room. And going to the tea room lets you draw 
two T cards and keep one. So here's what I've got. Um, Duncan Campbell and Jeffrey Power. I've met the two of these fine fellows in the tea room, and one of them is going to become my best friend. And I've got to make a choice because these give me two options. Actually, both of these two are art-focused. This one says, hey, uh, because I've got this tea room, later on in the game, if I ever try to commission a silhouette, which requires two influence, a club and a spade, I could discard this card to get the silhouette for free. Now, a portrait is even more expensive. It requires a spade, a diamond, and a heart. Um, and if I'm trying to do that, I could discard Jeffrey and get the portrait for free. So, um, you know, this one is arguably better uh, because a portrait is worth four points. A silhouette is only worth one point. Uh, but there's something else going on as well. The bottom of these cards will reward me at the end of the game. Uh, this one says an extra point for every family I make a connection to with this crest. And the other one is for this one, uh, whether I'm recruiting people from the Tawn or from the, you know, the uh, the Lord, uh, oh, the, well, the 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 House of Lords, yeah, the, the Lord Commons or the Tawn, I want to be collecting these ones or these ones because they're worth extra points to me. Now. For these T cards, it's one or the other. If I've still got this T card at the end of the game, I get these bonus points. If I recruited, say, uh, Jeffrey over here, um, you know, who is also a member of the Power family, this is worth an extra point to me. If I take this T card and then I recruit this politician, and the other one, you can see, well, hey, this family crest didn't come out at all. So I think everything is pointing me towards this one. I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it in my tea room. Everybody can see what that is. Everybody, and the other one goes to the bottom of the deck. And everybody knows I want to grab cards with this flag. That one right there, specifically. And so other players might jump and beat me to it and keep me from it. Whoa! Wait! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Actually, folks, it turns out I misread the rules. What happens in tea time stays in tea time. I should have put that card face down on the table so nobody knows my secret objective to try to get in good with the particular family that the card says. Now, I'm going to go on ahead and play as if Jen somehow knows what my goals are. But in the full game, she would not know. It just turns out me and Jen, we were playing a slightly more cutthroat version of the game without realizing it. Okay, let's get back to it. Because again, if I don't use this when I go to get a portrait made, um, you know, because again, if I use it, it'll save me a lot of influence. But if I hold on to this till the end of the game, every card with that symbol on it is worth an extra point to me. Okay, so that was my first turn. It is Jen's turn. And Jen says, oh, you've left it wide open. Jen was kind of worried that she might have to rush her way up the beehive if I came over here as well. Um, but now she's thinking, well, hey, I'm already on the ground floor. I could keep working up or, you know, by, she's, I mean, she's got four. She could just climb four times if she's got enough influence to make it all the way up. Or since I'm not racing after her, she's still in the lead. She could go do something else like, oh, I don't know. Snagging Jeffrey Power? Boom! Jen is going to snag that right out from underneath me because she sees it's worth a point to me. Oh no! Oh, there's some skullduggery afoot, um, you know, in the beehive. So, Jen is going to go and grab this. Now remember, it requires a club. So, Jen didn't need to use influence before, but she will now. Although, she's got a tough choice. She could just use her club, but remember, hers is a double club, and it's kind of wasting the double club to do a single club action. So I don't think Jen's going to use her um, super double club. She will use the next one up. She'll use her spade. She's going to discard that. Um, and again, remember, this says, hey, spades can be used for club actions. And so Jen's grabbed this, and um, she has gotten her first member of parliament under her thumb. And she gets a couple of benefits from it. One, she keeps this from me because she knows I want it and it was worth a point to me. Two, it gives her a goal she is chasing after over the entire game. At the end of the game, the more clubs she's got, the more points she gets. She can get two or four points if she's got three or six clubs available to her in influence at the end of the game. So, um, you know, if I'd gotten this, that would have been a goal for me. Now it's a goal for her instead. And finally, she immediately gets one heart, which, as you recall, is the highest highest uh, priority. So, this is a, uh, you know, a uh, you know, House of Lords or the Lord Commons. It comes over here into her Lord Commons. Let me go on ahead and zoom in on um, Jen's board. 
Let's see here. There we go. Oops, nope, that's my board. If we go over here, you can see. So she's just placed this. And the first time she recruits a politician, it's free. The next time she recruits a politician, if she were to grab another one, it would go to this second space. The, so she'd have the one objective. Now she has a second objective. But the second one is going to cost influence and more influence and more influence and more influence. The more you dabble in politics, the more it's going to cost you. But the more it'll pay off. Because if you can completely fill this column, you'll get five victories points at the end of the game. So now that Jen has started down the road to politics, she might keep it going. But most importantly, she just gave herself one heart influence. All right. And I got to tell you, folks, that is a bummer because that is exactly where I was going to go. And that's why Jen went there. But there's still one more politician I can snag this round. So I better go grab him. Even though he isn't the one I wanted, let's go on ahead and get in good with, oh, what's your name, sir? Uh... Uh, Eamon Fitzgerald. All right, so it's the first one, so it's free, although it is going to cost me one club. And I've already played my club card, so now i got to go up. I'll use my next lowest priority one, my spade, to get that. And uh, coincidentally, both these politicians give us one heart. There are other politicians who will give other stuff, other benefits, like, hey, a different star card, or a spade, or you know, who knows. But in this case, we both ended up getting a heart, and now I've got an objective. I I want to collect sets of spades by the end of the game. I want to I don't want to be filling this heart meter up. I want to be filling this spade meter up so I can get more points out of them. Now there's something else that was important for me as well. Let me go on ahead and zoom back in on my board again. Because my patron is uh, Baron of Esk. My ba my patron has certain expectations of me. He wants me to go in heavy on politics. Because as you can see, this is a reminder, both on um, my patron's card and on the board itself, that if I can snag two politicians, I will unlock an ability. For the rest of the game, I can get more politicians or um, bond members without having to spend the club. So I can um, you know, exert influence that way cheaper for the rest of the game. Plus, once I've gotten two politicians on board, this flips. Because I should say, in addition to the cards I have in my hand, I've got this as well. And this gives me a club. Hey, you know what? Actually, I'm a bit of a dummy. To do this action, remember, I needed a club here. I'm not going to spend my spade to do it. I'll spend this club to do it. Boom, I'll tap that. And so I'll hold on to this spade for some other action I'm going to do later. Now, this can get upgraded to become a, a double club or a spade if I get two politicians. And you better believe, if I could have gotten the first one, I was going to try to get the second one so I could unlock my special power here in the first week. But Jen just blocked me out of it. So there were two reasons that she was incentivized. Not only did she not want me to get that extra point, but when she saw what my tea time card was, but she didn't want me to unlock my special special power. So, um, that's fine. All's fair in the beehive. And you know what? Thinking back to it, I'm sure Paula pointed this out. He would have pointed out it was silly for Jen to use her spade to do that when she had her own starting club she could have used. So I'm just going to retroactive so Jen can keep her whole hand of cards available to her. Right. So that was my second turn. It is now Jen's third turn. And now that she has well and thoroughly scuppered my, politi my political ambitions, she's going to go back to the beehive and keep climbing. So now, she needs to go to the next level. And it is going to cost a club to go to any of these three. And which one is she going to go to? Well, if she comes up here, she gets to commission a silhouette. Uh, now, she'll still have to pay for the silhouette, which requires an additional club and a spade, plus a club to get in there. So that's interesting. Remember, Jen has the special double club. So she could use this card for the two clubs and then she did a spade as well to uh, commission a silhouette, which is worth a point, which is not much. But here's the deal. If you want to go into the art world, uh, there is a reminder and it's underneath these cards. By the way, folks, everything you're seeing today is prototype. These cards are a little bit too big for the board, so they kind of cover up that first, you have to do a silhouette before you can do a miniature, before you can do a portrait. You must do them in that order. So 
So a silhouette is not much, but it is a gateway to bigger, higher scoring potential. So Jen could come up here using her double club plus a spade and get her first step, a silhouette. And it would save her one of her workers. She's basically doing double duty with one worker. She's climbing the beehive and doing a gallery action. But that's not what Jen's after. Jen is after the ear of the queen. So she is going to follow this path. And she was afraid that she might miss out on it. And then her second thing is, hey, she'd do some tea room stuff. And she might want to do some tea room stuff, but nope. She wants Queen Victoria on her side. So she was the first to snag it, and it cost an extra club. It cost her a club to move up, plus one more club to use this. And now that she's done it, it's gone. Out of the game. Nobody else has any reason to go to Petticoat Lane and the dressmakers, because Jen beat them to it. And it's going to cost her two clubs... And just so happens, that's kind of her special deal. She saved her double club card specifically to do that. And what did she get? She got a queen card. Uh, it's the queen of hearts. This is going to help her a lot when we get to the end of the game and we all sit down for a nice civil game of whist because it doesn't get any higher than a queen. Uh, plus, it's also a heart, which is the highest priority for being able to exert influence during weeks one, two, three, and four. This um, is going to help her out quite a bit. And I forgot the queen actually goes into her discard pile like, you know, a regular... Di uh, but she'll get to this uh, later. And that was her second action. And, I mean, heck, if she has a chance, she might keep climbing and get to even higher levels. Because remember, my special thing, my uh, patron wants me to get into politics. Lady Tuesday over here, her patron wants her to climb, climb, climb. I mean, if Jen can make it all the way to the tippity top... The highest level, she'll get five bonus points as well as unlock her patron's um, bonus so she has even more influence available to her. So Jen definitely wants to keep climbing, climbing, climbing because she is Lady Tuesday. The same way I want to keep working politics. There are actually four different characters you could play. One of them wants you to work politics. One of them wants you to work the ton. One of them wants you to climb the beehive. And one of them really wants you to double down on the tea room. Each of the four playable characters has kind of like a focus that um, will really kind of direct your gameplay. And I'll talk a bit more about that in the final thoughts. But anyway, that was it for Jen. She is very happy. She's still got one more action, and she's got all of her most powerful cards left to be able to do it. So, it is now my next turn. And originally, like I said, I was planning on recruiting another member of the Parliament so I could get my bonus, but that won't happen. Now, there are other ways that I could do this but not right now. Um, grabbing a member of the Tawn, uh, you know, becoming friends with these people, gives me access to immediate benefits. Uh, but unfortunately, um, they aren't giving me access to recruiting more politicians. Also, if I can climb my way up all the way to the Crystal Palace, I could get a, a politician up there. And if all, both of them were taken, then when I hit this spot, I would just draw blind. But... That would require a lot of social climbing. I'm not going to get up there. I am not going to achieve my goal for this first week. But I'll get to it second week. Don't worry. What else am I going to do in the meantime? Well, i got to be honest. It might not hurt just to go back to the tea room because it's available to me. Because the more objective cards I have, the sooner I get them, the more I could be working towards those objectives over the course of the game. So how about I do this? But now it's going to cost me a diamond. The second highest. So, I have a diamond and a heart. I'll spend this diamond to go back to the tea room and draw two more. And I'm going to keep one of them. Okay. So, now these are interesting. Uh, this one... Oh, man. If I had chosen the other uh, herald, or you know, the, the other crest... And then I'd have a second one of these, and every one of these flags would be worth two points to me, but I didn't grab that one. So unfortunately, neither of these match the one I've already got. If they did, that would be the one I would want, definitely. Um, but, uh, so what I want to look at instead is, if I'm not going to try to collect these symbols, uh, you know, amongst the, those particular family members, and instead I'm going to use these cards, this one will let me do a miniature, thereby, you know, uh, saving myself two diamonds at a key moment when I'm low on influence, or this one will let me move up one step without having to spend a club. And now here's the deal. A club is not much of a savings. Saving two diamonds is a much bigger saving than one club. So I think it's a Jane um, Venables for me. 
That's right, folks. Um, I've now got a uh, second person on site, and they both come here into my T-card area. And I could discard either of them. And that's interesting, too. I could discard this one after I've earned a silhouette, which is worth one point. I could discard this one to get a miniature um, and save myself two diamonds. Then I, on a future turn, I could discard this one to get a portrait and save myself three influence. So if I don't want to go into set collection, these two things really push me towards a gallery-centric strategy because there can be a lot of points for that. A lot of points. Um, although there is one more thing to bear in mind. Uh, you may notice in the top corner of these T cards, there's a club and there's a heart. Remember, um, this one... Or, let's see... Oh, my politician wants me to collect spades? Neither of these provide me a spade. Neither of these are helping me with my other end goal from my politician there. So, I might not want to hold on to these. Maybe I will if I can recruit the right people. I mean, here's one. There's still one here that matches one of the flags I'm after. But I might drop these because they don't help me with my politician and instead go into the fine art world um, somewhere down the road and save myself a lot of influence. Because I got both of those for just singles. And this would, I mean, I, for two, I could spend one, two, three, four, five. That's a big investment that might pay off later for me. Okay, so uh, it is now Jen's last turn. Is she going to keep climbing? You know, I mean, remember, she has a goal. The same way I wanted to get, uh, she has a goal of getting higher and higher. And she's already used this power um, that gave her a club. If she can make it to level three, which she could do right now, this upgrade, so on future turns, it's a double club or a spade. So I think. Why not? It's wide open. Um, I didn't take it from her. So Jen is going to try to climb even more. But not necessarily, because Jen has a choice. Now that she's on this level, she could pay double spades to move up here, specifically to this area, and get a miniature made. She's not excited about that. Because remember, I think I talked about this before. You can't commission a miniature until you've done a silhouette. Jen hasn't done a silhouette yet. So if she were to move up here, which is the only direction up she could move, she would get to then, as a bonus, pay two diamonds to do a miniature. Except she wouldn't. This whole space would be wasted because she hasn't done a silhouette yet. So she could go and do a silhouette right now and prepare herself to move up next week. But there's another option. When you move on the beehive, you can go up by paying more and more um, influence. Or you can move laterally on your current level. It's not going to cost Jen anything, because uh, you can see there's no cost to move left or right and grab some of these other actions. So she could... Uh, basically get a bonus parlor turn. Or she could do a bonus tea time. I've been getting some tea time cards. Maybe she should grab some as well. She could even come all the way over here to the Viscount Salon and do a silhouette. Although the ironic thing is, if she comes over here to do a silhouette as a free bonus, then um, from here she has to come up here uh, and get a tea time. And then on this level, she could move laterally and do the miniature. So she could be plotting a multi-step plan right now uh, if she wants to keep moving. But wait, what else? She could go the other way. G again, jump to this one. And it's as if she visited the parlor to upgrade her deck of cards for the end game of Wiz. You know, preparing for the final boss fight. Or, same cost, nothing. She could jump all the way over here and do the same thing. Actually, I'm sorry. Either one of these, both of them could lead her up to having coffee with the Prime Minister. What's the benefit of that? Oh, getting another Queen card. If Jen can... I mean, there are only four cards related to Queen Victoria over here. If Jen can snag all four of them, she is going to destroy at Whist. Um, and which could be a, a huge source of points for her. There's points all over the place. The higher you make it up with the Beehive, the more points. The more you fill up with Lords of Common or the Ton, the more points you get. The more sets of art you do, the more points you get. And the more prepared you are for the epic game of Whist at the end, where in a two-player game, I think it reminds us here, um, where, or maybe it doesn't remind us actually on the player aid. 
thought it did. No. Okay, well, the player aid has a nice little summary of all the rules of WIS. The one thing it doesn't remind us is that at the end of the game, if I, in a two-player game, if I recall correctly, we are going to play seven hands of Wist. And if Jen can go into those seven hands with four Queen Victoria cards, she's pretty confident she's going to come out on top, and that could be where a, a lion's share of her points comes from. So... She's got. She doesn't want to move up. She does not want to pay double spades to get no benefit. So she is going to move laterally. Which way is she going to go? You know, as much as she would like to do some tea time and get herself a goal or do a silhouette, so she start working on art. Nope. She wants that queen. So she is going. She's going to move over and she'll just move here to Hyde Park. And since she's the first player here, she snags this. What is this? It's as if she just went to the parlor. But normally, it would cost influence to go to the parlor. It didn't cost Jen anything uh, because she moved laterally on that level. Now, moving laterally does get more expensive when you get to level four. You have to spend hearts to move from the academy to dinner with the prime minister uh, to the uh, dinner with the... Uh, March, Marchioness. The, the, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But anyway, Jen knows. She was able to pronounce that immediately. But anyway, she's coming over here. And that means she gets to do a bonus action. She can take any of these cards from the parlor right now. And each one of these cards has a reminder that in addition to adding this to her deck to make it more strong for the game of Whist, it also lets her trash her existing cards. Because remember... Jen has a deck of threes. Those are not going to help her much at the end. So the more she goes to the parlor and gets these star cards, the uh, better she's going to be positioned at the end of the game. Plus, these star cards could... I mean, heck, it's going to be a spade or a heart. And remember, heart is the highest suit. So that's going to give her more flexibility in the future. So what's she going to grab? Is she going to grab... Um, I think... I think... Um, she'll grab the Prince of Spades because it's an 11, or I'm sorry, it's a 12 versus an 11. And I think this is a mistake. There should be a little 11 on here as a reminder. But remember, folks, I've got a prototype. Now, on the flip side, if she bought a 10, she could actually trash two cards from her deck. Um, because remember, at the end of the game, after our four weeks, and we're going to play seven rounds of Whist, when Jen gets to the end of the game, if she doesn't have seven cards in her deck because she's been aggressively calling out all the crap cards, then she will fill the rest of her deck up with uh, cards from here. And most of these are very good cards. There's a few bad ones. There's some aces that are only ones, but most of them are higher than player cards. So she could get b upgraded cards for free the more she... Um, trashes cards right now. But I think she doesn't want a spade. She wants a heart. So she's going to take that, and she now gets to trash one card from anywhere. From her hand, from her draw pile, or from her discard pile. And again, this did not cost her anything. Oh, whoops, and I forgot to put this back at the bottom of the deck from my turn. So, what's she going to get rid of? She's going to get rid of one of these. Um, she... I, you know what? I think she will. She's going to get rid of her three of spades. It's the second... I mean, she could get rid of her clubs, but remember, her clubs are special. It's a double club. She might have use for that later on. So, she's going to get rid of her second... Her, her worst card right now, and she has replaced it with a much better card that's going to help her for the rest of the game. And she got to do that for free by moving laterally from Petticoat Lane to Hyde Park. And now, the next time she climbs... She's going to get some more influence with the queen herself, which is going to be a huge uh, deal for her. Okay, so that was Jen's fourth and final turn. And um, it is my fourth and final turn now. And what am I going to do? I could... I could start climbing. Although, again, my first step doesn't do me anything other than just opening the door to go elsewhere. So I could do that. But... Instead, I can see how Jen is really just doubling down hard on the, um, you know, the queen. I could come over here. Uh, we've already grabbed all the parliamentarians. How about we just get some rich, uh, you know, layabout uh, socialites on our turn too? So if I do this action, it's going to cost me a club. All right. And um, what have I still got in my hand? I've got a spade. A spade that will deliver for a club, so I'll use that. And so I did not use my heart card. All right, so I'm going to do this. And since it's my first uh, socialite, it's free. If I get more socialites, it's going to... The same way as if I get more and more... Um, what do you call them? 
politicians, the higher I go, the more it costs. Same thing for the socialites. And now this socialite, most of the time, the socialites give you some kind of discount on an action. I could, because I've got this socialite, I could get a um, portrait for cheaper. I wouldn't, I, normally it's a spade, a diamond, and a heart, and instead it would just call me diamond and hearts to get portraits. And I could try to get a lot of portraits and save um, you know, effort on it because of this person. Plus, they'd give me a diamond right now. But that's not the one I took. I took the other one. Doesn't give me any discount, but gives me a queen card. So I'm not going to let Jen get all four of them. I'm going to snag one myself, and I get it right now, because I would like to win a few hands of whist also. So I've got, oh, baby, the queen of diamonds. This is arguably the best one. I know that the heart is, for the, for the majority of the game, the heart is more valuable than diamond, because a heart can stand in for a diamond. But the diamond has a very special function. When we get to the game of whist, which is basically an old-style trick-taking game, Diamonds are the trump suit. And if you know trick-taking, being able to control the trump and um, diamonds are the trump is a big deal. So Jen sees, oh, she can't believe I just got that one. Controlling diamonds. If, if you can recruit anything, if any of these had been a diamond, Jen would have snagged one o over anything else because the more diamonds you can get, the better. I just got the queen of diamonds. <laughs> yeah, baby. Um, the queen loves me. Okay. So how did I do that? Oh, I recruited this person. I had to pay one, and that was it. I didn't get any other benefit. But now, if I can recruit four more parliamentarians and four more socialites, again, which will cost me more and more and more and more, filling each of these columns will give me five points, plus I'll get three additional points for having filled both. But that's not all. As soon as any player fills one of these two columns, they get this very special letter which is worth three points. By the same token, as soon as somebody gets a silhouette plus a miniature plus a portrait, they get this art award, which is worth three points. And when we get to the game of whist at the, uh, in week five, um, whoever has recruited the most star cards gets this um, three bonus points, plus they get to choose whether they lead in the game of whist or whether they follow in the game of whist, which again, if you know trick-taking, that's a huge decision to make, whether you're strong or weak, etc., etc. So anyway, that was it. Um, we have each done our four actions, and really, we kind of dabbled in almost everything except for the art world, uh, because neither of us are really incentivized towards it right now. That's not true. I might dabble later on because I've got these two teetotalers uh, who might be able to get me my second and my third step for free and score... I mean, these two cards could be worth seven points if I trash them. But they could be worth points depending on who I recruit. Now, what did I just recruit? I recruited the wrong family member. So I'm thinking, I'm probably not going to save these. I'm going to use these to get... After I've done a silhouette somewhere, then I'll use these to get these for free. Um, that's probably how I'm going to play my tea time. But you never know. We'll have to wait and see how things evolve. Oh, by the way, I should have said, as soon, any time a star card is taken, a new one comes out. So this should have happened immediately. And it was a Prince of Spades, which is not bad for me because um, I like spades. But unfortunately, this triple spade that I want, um, cards don't apply towards that. I need to have spades that I've stored. I need to have spades via this upgrade um, to be able to get more points for having spades. Having cards of spades, those I'm saving for the final battle, the final whist game. But anyway, if there were more players, they would all do their four... Uh, we'd finish all our four actions, and now we've reached the end of week one. And remember, I know... Everything I needed to know, almost everything I needed to know was reminded. Hey, if I was going to the beehive, here's how that works. Hey, if I was going to the ballroom, here's how that works. Um, here's how it works at the end of the week. Get your calling cards back, untwirl your host and hive tokens, draw four cards, and reset the ballroom and parlor. Okay, so... What does that mean? Well, all of these star cards, bye bye Nobody wanted them. So we're going to get three new ones available to us. And hey, there's a seven of diamonds. It's a low number, but having the trump suit, you can win a, a, you know, a, a trick-taking hand, a, a hand of whist, with a low number if you can time it right with the trump. And then there's a jack of clubs and a nine of diamonds. These might be hotly contested in the second round for amongst players who want to set up to win the most whist they can at the end of the game. Also, nobody got this socialite, so bye bye to them. We get our calling cards back. Um, Lord Shea is done in the tea room and the ballroom. And Lady Tuesday is done in the beehive. 
And new parliamentarians come out. As do new um, nouveau riche, or maybe they're maybe they're old money. Who knows? And by the way, I should say, folks, this is the two, the solo and two player side. Uh, if I were to flip it over, there would actually be four parliamentarians, four um, socialites. There'd be three opportunities to go to the gallery. I think three opportunities to go to the tea room, but there are still only two opportunities to go to the parlor. So the worker placement spots open up. But as I recall, the other side of this is the same. There's always this many actions, plus these bonus actions, which only unlock if somebody makes it to having dinner with the prime minister. And when you're having dinner with the prime minister, you can go and get extra cards without having to exert influence because the prime minister will do all the work for you. There's a lot of interesting actions that'll happen depending on how you work your way up the beehive and what bonuses you chase after. Oh, and one more thing. Um, any cards we didn't play, they get discarded. So, and now, de deck builder style, hey, I need to draw a four. My deck is empty, so I'm going to shuffle, and we'll see if I get the queen to go into week two. One, two, three, four. And I did. And I got my special card. Now, my remember, Jen's special club card is that she it's a double club. Mine is that I can trash this whenever I want to snag one of these. And I might use this going in week two to grab the nine of diamonds really fast so that I can up my chances of doing well in Whist. And I know in week three, I'm going to be rocking a diamond, a five of diamonds, because I did not draw that in week two. Meanwhile, Jen does the same thing. She needs to um, shuffle up her her deck and draw her four. One, two, three, four. And get ready for the next round, which means I become the first player. And Queen Victoria says, it's now week two. And the game begins again, and I will be first to send my calling cards out. If I want to grab these diamonds, I better grab them quick. If I want to double down on these politicians or these... Well, and remember, I need need to get a second politician because if I do, I unlock my ability. Oh, by the way, oh, these should have untapped as well. I forgot. So we both have access to our clubs. But if I get one more politician, it's a double club or a spade. If Jen just goes up one more level in the beehive, it's a double club or a spade. Jen needs to make it all the way to the top to unlock this heart. Um, or no, I'm sorry, no. She only needs to make it up two levels from the top to unlock that heart. But if she makes it all the way to the top, she gets a bonus five in addition to the three if she's the first to do it. I have to make it almost to the top to unlock my second. So my strategy is politics and make it almost to the top. Jen's is make it to the top. But that's just a suggestion based on our patron, based on our sponsor. There's a lot of things to do here, folks. And remember, I'm planning on getting into the fine art world too with my tea time cards. And uh, the game is afoot. And now at this point, I think the only thing I haven't really described is I keep talking about Wist. And if you're like me, you might not know exactly what that means. Let's say, let's just fast forward, bop, 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 and say, you know, we, hey, we both worked our way up, and we got various bonuses, and we've, you know, we've, uh, you know, made different amounts of um, stuff. We've built our decks up, and all of that, you know. So we're, we're, we've got more objectives we're chasing. We've done art. We all, all the things we're trying to do, right? Okay. Once week four comes up, a few things happen. First of all, each player get, grabs all their cards, goes through their entire deck, and let's say I'd had a couple more cards. Um, oops, that's from the wrong deck. Say I'd had a couple. I'd done a couple more upgrades. Counts how many stars they've got, and in the end, I only had two stars. I only got two upgrades. Although, hey, they were both diamonds, so that's going to help me. And let's say Jen. You know, she ended up getting... Remember, she's chasing for that other queen. Let's say she got all the queens because she chased after that one. And, um, oh, where's the other one? I forget where it is. I think it might be on another, um, you know, getting a good with somebody. Uh, so say she ended up getting a bunch. And so she counts hers up. And she has one, two, three. She has three stars. Since she has more upgrades than me... She wins this, and we now, in a two-player game, have to prepare for a game of seven or you know, seven rounds of whist. And she's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So she already has seven cards. One of her cards will go away. I think she'll get rid of this crappy three of hearts she never got rid of. So she's still got some diamonds, she's got some high cards, she's ready to play whist. I look at mine. One, two, three, four, five. 
<laughs> and let's say, let's say actually I got one less card. So I look at my hand and I was focusing, I was focusing on art. I was focusing on politics. I never really built my hand up very much. Yeah, I got a couple of diamonds. That's nice. But I'm only sitting on one, two, three, four. I've still got all my original cards. Well, at the, you know, at the very least, I'm sure I would have trashed my uh, card for another diamond. Let's say I'd done that. But still, I've only got one, two, three, four, five, or six. So what I have to do is, um, Jen, she had too many. So she had to jettison one. Me, I don't have enough. So I draw one randomly. And I get a double club ace. Ugh, an ace is a one. That's not really great at all. Okay. Fine. Uh, but anyway, we're now ready to play whist. Jen, because she um, she used to say, hey, you know what? You lead because she gets to choose. So now I have to lead. And the way trick taking, the way whist works is I have to play a card. Whatever suit I choose is going to be the suit that everybody else has to play. And after everybody's played a card. So if I play my five of spades, everybody has to play a spade. Um, and then whoever played the highest number wins. And I'm not feeling pretty good about winning at the spades. But here's the deal. If I play a five of spades and Jen looks at her hand of cards and she doesn't have any spades, then she doesn't have to play. She, um, which means she would lose because I would have played the highest lead card. I would have played the highest spade. But on the other hand, when you are in a situation where you can't follow suit, then you can play whatever you want, which means you'll probably lose unless you play the trump. And remember... The trump is the diamond, which is why it's good to have a lot of diamonds. So anyway, I look at my hand, and it is not good. I got a lot of low cards that are probably going to lose me. Now, if I knew Jen didn't have very many diamonds, I might play these hoping she can't follow, and then I'd win. And for every hand uh, you win, you get two points. So if you... I mean, this is 14 points if you can win all seven hands. If you really built an incredibly strong... 14 points is better than getting to Buckingham Palace. It's better to be, you know, the master of whist but you got to work for it throughout the game and get the, and then play a good game of trick taking so i look at this because jen's making me play do i just burn my best card right out of the gate um well this one can't be beat it can't be uh be, but, but here's the problem because uh the, it, because this is the trump because the trump has not been broken nobody has used this to win a hand you can't play diamonds yet so i cannot play a diamond i can't play my five my seven my ten i gotta play something else so i could hopefully win with my five of hearts or my one of clubs what the heck i'll just play this knowing i'm probably gonna lose and then jen looks at her hand and she says oh i gotta play clubs okay well it just so happens Jen has three clubs, and she's going to save her or two clubs. She's going to save her queen of clubs for later. She'll play this. She won the first hand, um, and so she just got two points. But because she win, one, she has to lead. She can't play diamonds. That's the danger of having all these diamonds is that you might not be able to win right off the bat. So Jen's got to play something. She saw me play a low club, so she figures, um, chances are I don't have any better clubs, and she wants to win, so she says, hey, although here's the deal, she worries. If I don't have clubs, because I played a low club and I don't have a high club, if she plays clubs, and then I can't follow because I don't have any more clubs, then that means I could play a trump, and I could beat her queen with a seven of diamonds. So that's the risk. What is Jen going to play now? Because she wants to win all seven of these hands. So if she's been paying attention to the cards I've been grabbing, have I pushed really hard on diamonds? Did she get most of the diamonds? Um, you know, do I have a wide variety? You know, ideally, you kind of want to have three of the four um, suits, but not one of them. Because then when that one suit doesn't get played, you get to bring, bust your diamonds out. Um, so what is it? Remember, Jen cannot play her diamonds. She's worried about burning one of her high-value cards. But she's got almost nothing but high-value cards. So what the heck? She'll play her Ten of Hearts. And now I look at my hand, and I must play a heart. And all I've got is my measly starting five. So Jen just won her second trick. And because she won, she gets to go again. She still can't play her diamonds because nobody's broken diamonds yet. Um, so what is she going to play next? And then what am I going to counter with? When will the trumps come into play? I'm not sure, but that's how whist works. And that's the interesting thing. You play the majority of this game as a very fast-paced game of influence and worker placement, and then you face off against each other like all proper Victorians did over the gaming table in a very civilized game of whist. And that, folks, should give you a full idea of the apistocracy gameplay experience. And now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.